Hey everybody, welcome back to Kick It In The Sticks. We're glad you came back to join Ricky and I. Today is finally the big day. We are burning down the house. Yay! That's it. We'll give you a little walk around. This is what's left of everything. Ricky is gonna be our fire starter for this I am this so episode. pumped. Yeah, yeah, she's excited. She's a fire bug, so. <laughs> Anytime she can play with fire, poke it, start it, she's happy. So this is everything that's left. Pretty much all the windows have been removed. All the grout was removed. Still have the big picture windows in yet, but that's about it for windows. And for those who have never seen a controlled burn done, we are having a controlled burn. Fire department will come out here to help us and assist us with this project. But for those who have never seen a controlled burn, you're about to see one. And for those who have never seen how they're started, we have accelerants throughout the house. So little piles of straw and some sawdust and a little bit of diesel fuel just to get things ignited. Placed with a strategy to help try and bring down one side of the house first. We want to kind of try to knock out this center wall right here. This is a dividing wall between the lower half of the structure and the larger two-story structure. We're thinking we want to try to hopefully get this wall to burn out first so everything will kind of collapse in the center and keep everything contained and not falling out around the perimeter of the house but within the perimeter of the house. So that's pretty much it. Waiting for the fire department to show up here once they have arrived and we get to go ahead and they're ready. We'll start these piles up and let this thing burn. Yeah, your dad's gotta get back here. Should we put that in Sure. Make a nice little boom. See all that fire shooting right up through that hole? Alright, everybody out. Up here. <laughs> Last time they said they did one of these controlled burns, it took them about 45 minutes from light until the uh, whole, whole structure was to the ground. We'll see how long this one takes. Sitting at about 6.30 right now. Now it may not look like it, but each one of these water tanks actually holds approximately 3,000 gallons of water. And this is what firefighters will use, especially in rural areas like where I live, and they can't hook a pumper directly to a municipal source of water such as a fire pit. Instead, they'll use water tenders to transport water from nearby sources such as lakes and ponds where they're allowed to do so, take that water back to the scene of the fire, and dump it in these tanks so that way pumpers have a source of water to continue pumping into the fire. She's smoking all the way up into the attic. That east end is really cooking. Yeah, I can see the kitchen was the kitchen was well lit. Yeah. See, it didn't really have to cut too many holes through it because I ended up with some guys wanted some floorboards on it the upstairs because they can't. It's hard to get them floorboards. That house is a hundred over a hundred years old. You can see the hue of light in the rafters in the kitchen. See? Yep. yep. Oh, uh -huh. <coughs> so I, she's burning good in that in that wing. See how get that, that's what I'm saying. We can get that wing to that east wing to fall down. Hopefully, she'll all fall to the east. It's coming up to the yep. ceiling. Coming coming through the, the, roof, on the, the other, end, the other wing. Yep, yep, yep. See him? Huh? Well, it's not through the roof, but see, part of the pin is missing over there. At that end of the house, we don't have to worry about squirting any water. Around. Wind's off a good direction too. It's yeah, all blowing right to the east, pretty much. Drifting to the east, anyway. That other end of the house is going good. What was the other chimney for on that end? 
Was that furnace? There was, there was, yeah, well, there was just two dimmings in the house. All the way to the yeah, basement? That went all the way to the basement. This one went to the crawl space. Okay. There's basement in that half, and there's crawl space in this part. Hey David, you got we time AJ started at 6 30. See if it'll get done. How, how fast it'll be down? 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a pool out. That's now. what it did of Eckers or Melissa. Look, at, this, look, look at that east hat, that wing. Yeah. That east wing is really cooking. For those of you wondering how we were able to do this controlled burn today, there's some steps you have to take. You're not going to just flick a match at a structure this large, burn it down to the ground, and think there aren't going to be some kind of repercussions for doing so. For example, if a passerby were to report this large billowing plume of smoke to the Department of Natural Resources, you can bet you're going to be getting a visit from the DNR that day. And if they come out and they start asking questions to figure out what's going on and you don't have the proper documentation or the authority to burn down a structure, they can start handing out fines. And if they want to get really nasty about it, once the fire has been extinguished, they can go through the ashes, take samples, and analyze them to find out if there were any harmful materials that could have been environmentally hazardous during the time of the burn. So to avoid all of that, which would just lead to more fines and possibly even jail time, we wanted to make sure we did this the right way. We contacted the fire department first. They said that they would do the controlled burn, but they needed some sort of documentation themselves. Just because of them being involved with the fire, they want to make sure that they weren't held liable for anything that might arise if the DNR were to get involved or any other outside agency. So that put us back to contacting the DNR and the DNR told us yes you can do a controlled burn but you have to have the house inspected for any hazardous materials that could be environmentally dangerous once fire and smoke starts being released into the air. We had to contact a local agency to have materials inspected from the house to determine if there was any asbestos or any other harmful type of material of that sort that could be potentially dangerous in a fire like this. We got the green light though, we had everything tested, everything passed, we sent that paperwork back to the DNR and then the DNR gave us a time frame of when we could burn this structure down. They had to be notified before we were going to do the burn and we had to do it within their time frame that they allowed us. So from that point, we contacted the fire department again. The fire department was given that date range. They figured out a date and time that was going to work best for them, and they contacted other surrounding departments to do a practice control burn. Now, the firefighters gain a lot from this too, just as a form of practice in communication, coordination. I mean, it's also good just to get the equipment out and running as well. Oh yeah, I can see the timbers are coming down in this kitchen there.
use the water barn for its own property? I would say it's pretty close to that, yeah. The barn was about that far away from that garage. Or, uh, when you saved the garage. <laughs> and now you gotta save it again. It's neatly compared to that barn. But it actually worked out good. We just, one of the doors caved in or fell down or was open or whatever. Uh, and then we went in through the side door so we could push it right back out through the wall that was coming in. Oh, wow. <laughs> Great. Getting toastier. Getting warm. Hey, you might not have a lot of lawn on the east side to cut there. I heard the lawn on the south side is on fire too. Oh great. That'll all come back. It'll all come back. Starting to cave in on the kitchen side here. The ceiling keeps collapsing in. Doing an amazing job keeping the garage nice and cool over there. Very impressive. It is starting to come up through this roof now, right by the chimney. If all goes as planned, hopefully this will start to sink right in the middle and come down. East side's really collapsing. It's not gonna be long. Heat is getting intense back here too.
I think I'm getting a suntan over here. starting to spray more water on this garage as the fire continues to creep more toward the west. It's getting a lot more intense, the heat is. Very interesting too. It's just crazy to see you can see right through the house pretty much. It's starting to cave in on this east end here. I can see the roof is starting to really sink right around the chimney. There it goes. Pretty much the way we wanted it. The whole east end collapsed in over here. Just the way we had it planned, boy, is that getting hot. If I had to uh, describe the intensity of this heat, even though I'm about 180 feet back or so from this fire right now, imagine standing right next to a well-lit bonfire in a small portable fire pit and how intense that heat can become on your skin. It just feel that burn. That's what I'm feeling right now where I'm standing and I am good distance away from this fire right now. This thing is throwing off massive amounts of heat. Tin. Tin is burning green up there. Fire's gonna creep out to the day lily bed. I can't believe how clean it's burning, oh honestly. Oh my god, Whoa. here it goes.
just missed the garage. So it's probably a good thing we never did find a way to get the steel off of this roof. We were going to try to do that earlier before doing this controlled burn. However, we just didn't know how to get up to the rooftop safely and peel the steel off. That's probably a good thing we never did figure that out because as I'm coming around this tree here, you're going to see that I think the steel actually prevented a large portion of the burning structure from falling any closer than necessary to the garage. The steel actually built a wall, so to speak, as it fell down to the ground and kept everything shoved over to the main fire. Well, it was a little further from the garage than I thought, but still close enough. So we're looking at just shy of a half hour, about 25 minutes, and the main structure is completely collapsed. So at this point I just want to send out a huge thanks to all of the community firefighters who made this possible for us. I did mention a thank you to one of the firefighters. He's like, well you guys were the ones that lit the fire. That might be the case, but without the help of the firefighters, we could have never done this safely like we did and protected the nearby structures. My house is just a little ways over from this house that we burnt down on the neighboring property and the garage is a whole lot closer, as you can see right in the background there. Everything that we wanted to keep standing stayed standing and safe. So without the fire departments, we would have never have been able to have done this ourselves. This was just way too big of a project. House came down exactly as we pretty much had planned. Everything fell. Pretty much inside, perfect. All the structures we wanted to save are still standing and looking good, so. I would say this is awesome. They're doing an awesome job. Oh, this is awesome. You guys did awesome. Thank you guys for doing this. You guys lit it. Well, I mean, we lit it, but you're helping us keep all the stuff that we wanted to save up there. So that's that's awesome. I don't know what, the, what we would have done otherwise. I think you were saying we kind of people, right? I got it. You're fine, I think a PKJ company got a little hot, so maybe just give my eye. Okay. Definitely a lot cooler than it was before. Just amazing. This is just simply amazing. This was a huge help to be able to just burn this thing down. I'm so glad we were able to get the permits. This was quite the process. So that's what's left.
cooler than what it just was here about oh 10 minutes ago and we're looking at oh yeah about 45 minutes 45 minutes to burn this all down to this point and now it'll just continue to smolder burn up the remainder of any of the timber that's in there hopefully the, the steel roof doesn't cause too much suffocation that it'll all pretty much burn up into ash or nothing garage is still standing perfect that doesn't look like Oh, a little of the siding does look like it got scorched on this side. Yeah, oh yeah, it got a little hot over here, but hey, it didn't burn up. That's all that's important. Coming up in the next videos, we're going to be continuing on with this process of the cleanup now from what's left over after the burn down of the house. So just remember, if you like what you saw here today, please subscribe, smash that like button, and ring that bell so you can be notified the next time I upload a new video, which should be next weekend. And as always, we hope you'll come back to kick it in the sticks and hang out with us, so we'll see you in the next one.